Hello all, my name is John. And I'm Tyler. And together we are DeLong Rigging Solutions, or DRS for short. We're going to go over the parts of a counterweight fly system. It is the most common type of system in the modern proscenium theater. Uh, today we're going to look at a single purchase system. However, I would point out that many of the same components also exist in a double purchase system, making most of this information pertinent to both types. So we're going to start at the batten side and work our way back to the fly rail. Uh, the batten, or pipe, uh, is what you attach your loads to. Typically in theater, uh, your loads are going to be things like scenery, drapes, lights, audio, that kind of stuff. Uh, in this particular theater, there are actually three different types of pipes or battens being used. The reason for this is because of the span between the lift lines. Uh, the distance between the lift lines in this particular theater is greater than ideal, which means that schedule 40 inch and a half pipe, which is the industry standard, is not acceptable in this situation. Most situations it is, but this one, just due to the deflection, it does not meet code. The solutions they've come up with in this theater are using ladder truss. Um, ladder truss is a wonderful solution as far as taking care of the deflection issues, but it does have some idiosyncrasies that can make it a little difficult to work with. The other solution in this theater is two inch schedule 40 pipe. Uh, the problem with two inch schedule 40 pipe is that it's actually, its diameter is so large that not all moving light clamps will fit on it. Uh, so moving light clamps tend to have to go to the ladder truss in this theater or to the old pipes if there's not another option. So we've talked about the batten. The next thing we need to talk about is your trim chain. Uh, the trim chain is going to be the chain that is wrapped around the batten and connects to the lift line via shackles. Um, shackles are a larger conversation, but just know that you should be able to identify the working load limit and manufacturer of your shackles by looking at them. But the trim chain is what I want to talk about real quick for you. Um, selection of the type of chain is very important. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the ANSI code, uh, E1.4-1, as well as I believe there's some ASTM codes that specify what type of chain you should be using. So it's really important to know that if you need to replace a trim chain, don't just go down to the hardware store, dig through the code, find out what it is you need, and get the appropriate stuff. Moving on, however, so you've got your trim chain that attaches the batten, which then shackles to the lift line. And the lift line goes upstairs, which will be our next stop. So let's head upstairs. So following the load line up to the grid, the load line is going to go through a loft block. Each load line on a batten goes through its own loft block. In this case, in this theater, it's going through an upright loft block that is mounted in the cable well. Above the cable well, you have a loft beam. In some theaters, you'll have an underhung loft block hanging directly off of the loft beam. However, like I said, in this theater, is an upright loft block in the cable well. So, your cable, your load line, is going to come through the loft block and then it's going to head to the head block. So once our load line comes through the loft block, it's going to come over here to the head block. All the lift lines for a batten are going to end up going through the same head block. Notice that also, your purchase line goes through the same head block. So all of these lines and one in your purchase line go over the block and down to the top of the arbor where it terminates. It should be noted on this one that on those shackles where it terminates there should be some mousing wires. That being said, I promise I'm going to fix that as soon as I'm done filming. At any rate, coming back up and talking about the head block, so you have all of the load lines go over and terminate to the arbor, but also you've got your purchase line, which is attached to both the top and the bottom of the arbor, and goes through the head block on the top and the foot block down below. This is the purchase line, which is the fiber rope that runs from the top of the arbor over the head block, down through the rope block, around the tension block, and back up to the bottom of the arbor. 
This purchase line is typically operated from the fly rail or the locking rail, which is the location where you will find the technicians who are operating the system. Back to tension blocks, also known as foot blocks or idler blocks. The tension block in most systems is attached to the T-rail with guide shoes that allow it to slide and float so that the weight of the tension block keeps the purchase line tight while still allowing an option to get some slack in the purchase system such as this. A little more about T-rails. There are a number of proprietary systems out there, but most counterweight systems use T-rails of some variety to create a guide system on the wall behind the locking rail for the arbors. It keeps the arbors from hitting each other as well as holding the tension block in place. There are a few other terms we should talk about. The first one is crash rails. There are two crash rails in the system. A crash rail is a metal bar usually made of angle iron, often with a piece of hardwood attached to it. There's going to be one crash rail at the bottom to stop the travel at the bottom for the arbor, and one at the top to stop the travel at the top for the arbor. It's not uncommon, and it's actually desirable to have a mid-level loading bridge as well. On a mid-level bridge, you can fine tune the balance between your load out on the batten and the counterweights in the arbor. Also, mid-level bridges are often places where you will find pin rails, which will go about or go over pin rails in more depth in another video. Another nice thing about mid-level bridges is they allow options such as incremental loading when you're building a taller piece of scenery. The next term we need to talk about is loading bridge or loading gallery. The loading bridge is a catwalk above the fly rail where you load counterweight into the counterweight arbor. The counterweight are called bricks. They vary in size depending on the system. In this particular system, they are 20 pound bricks. So if you take a brick and you put it into the arbor, which is something that I'm going to cover in another video, you have added weight to your counterweight. One thing to note, is that you have a red brick down there. In some systems, they're yellow, but there is always a brick that indicates pipe weight. This tells the weight loaders not to strip past that point in order to keep the system in balance when it's empty. All right, folks, I think that covers the major components of a counterweight fly system. Please remember that DeLong Rigging Solutions one-shot train videos are meant as a general overview. Every system is different. Every venue has different procedures. All statements made make certain assumptions about systems and venue similarities. Nothing can replace on-site training with a qualified individual. If you ever have a question or concern about rigging or rigging safety, do not hesitate to reach out to us or another qualified vendor in your area.